For years now, people in the photography world have leaned towards film as the more nostalgic and beautiful medium of photography. But there are ongoing and rising costs associated with film photography that many of us don't have the capacity or the time to partake in. Especially if you don't want to get into film to just have to digitally scan your negatives later. Nevertheless, digital photographers are often still trying to replicate the look of film in their edits. Now, I lost interest in film photography a few years back, but there was a certain quality about it that is not as prominent in digital pictures. Film tends to have a certain glow about it, especially in the highlights, and this is something that I think is controlled much more on digital. Now, certainly some of this could be down to the older lenses and maybe cheaper lenses that were sometimes used with film, but... A lot of it is also down to how the film reacts to the light. And recently I bought myself a Leica Q and this digital perfection really showed through with this camera. It is so unbelievably sharp and clear that it almost put me off taking pictures with it a little bit. At times this like perfect IQ may be, uh, is probably a positive, but it kind of felt almost a little boring That's not to say it would necessarily matter if a picture is good, a picture is good. Uh, But there's a kind of intangible feeling from maybe some slight imperfection or film-like glow to a picture. And that's where this $36 1 8th black diffusion filter from Kent Faith or KNF Concept comes in. Filmmakers have been using filters like these for years and it's definitely made its way into the photography world too. So let's take a look. So Kent Faith reached out to me about doing a review on one of their filters. And since I knew the brand and have used their adapters for like a M to Fujifilm, and I recently bought one of their tripods from B&H, which I'm actually using to make this video, I decided I would give the filter a go. It comes in this nice little case, which is uh, a bonus. Uh, One thing I did say was that I would only make this review if I could be open and honest, but they did, however, provide me with an affiliate link that you can use with the code Liam. It's good until the end of 2024, so if you want to support the channel and pick up a diffusion filter like this, there's a link in the description. And even though the affiliate link could be perceived as making me bias, I promise that I'm still going to give my honest thoughts on this product, whether you decide to buy one or not. I'll be testing the filter on this Leica Q that I bought recently. It's the original Leica Q Type 116. So this is the 58 millimeter or 59 millimeter, 49 millimeter, sorry. Yeah, 49 millimeter thread size. And the first test is really how it fits on the lens. It goes on there nice and snug. It doesn't feel like it's gonna go loose, but does the hood fit back on the lens afterwards? I think it does. Boom, okay, great. So I'm gonna take this filter uh, on a bit of a walk around the city and shoot some scenes in a variety of light conditions with and without the filter on the camera. So you can see what the actual effects look like and then a bit later, we'll pixel peep at the actual results. Cool. Ultimately, these comparison scenes with the GoPro were absolutely boring, so I'm not going to put a bunch of these clips in, and we're going to skip straight to the comparisons in Lightroom. So let's start off by just looking at some simple comparison pictures. These are nothing special, and they're just to give an idea of what the differences between with and without this filter would be. So this is a really simple picture, and it was just because of this point here that was glowing. Uh, The light hitting this gold reflective part of the curtain here. Uh, This is with the filter, and this is without. Kind of center it a bit more. You can see it's very subtle, but it's dropped the contrast a little bit, and that highlight is kind of blooming a little bit. This is another one where it looks really, really subtle, and I think maybe the focus is I can't tell if the focus is off slightly or if it's just the diffusion filter causing it. Let's move that down. Alright, this is with the filter, this is without. See, with the filter is still sharp, but there's maybe a reduction in sharpness a little bit. Kind of takes off this kind of harder digital edge that you see in this one. This one is so 
and like really really detailed same again here landscape shot of pike's peak this one is without i think usually the uh, this, this one might be with and this one's without see it's so subtle that i can't even exactly tell the difference the exposure might have changed slightly here Usually I had the filter on first and then removed it for the second picture. I think, yeah, I think there's slightly more detail in the mountains here on the second one. So almost imperceptible sometimes. And you maybe, what we're seeing here is just that slight loss in, in light transmission, maybe. But I usually don't think it was as prominent as that. Alright, looking out of our kitchen window that clearly needs washed. Here's a pretty clear one. I think maybe the sun was just slightly more behind the blinds here. But you can see, especially down here, the difference. This one's without and this one's with. You can see the highlights here glowing up here. Yeah. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Like You can compare them side by side. The highlights are really glowing there. I'm sure that's because the sun is a little more visible. Alright, simple shot. This one doesn't really do much, so let's move on to this one. Here at, at night time, this is where it really shone. Was These lights are all blooming, and this is without the filter, and there's a slight bloom in the lights, but it's just not as prominent as you would expect from digital pictures, and this has got much more of that uh, film-ish bloom that you might see particularly here as well. Uh, a few years ago I shot some cine still at the same building and you'd get that red kind of bloom around this thing. Around any point of light really, but I, I always noticed it on this. And then without it, almost gone. There's very little glow around there at all, which makes the picture a little more flat, I guess, a bit. Uh, and you know, as I say earlier, too perfect. So let's look at some pictures from a recent family trip we took to Florida. All of these pictures will have the filter on. I didn't try and take it on and off for comparison. I just photographed kind of as I normally would. And even just here when we were packing the suitcase, you can see in the background here this pretty strong glowing light here. I gave this picture a bit of an edit. So let's see if we can view it. There we go. So there's without the edit, still with the glow and with the edit. Same thing again. I've got about 50 different pictures here to go through. A little kind of a portrait of my kid. And generally what generally what this diffusion filter is said to do with skin is to kind of soften skin up a little bit. It's so subtle on this filter that you'll barely even notice it. Now this picture, if I zoom in to 100% crop, you can see there's still plenty of detail left in the dog's fur. It's a super sharp digital edge without the filter and it's softened it a little bit but without making the picture actually soft and it's kind of hard for me to actually describe but you get the idea. These pictures didn't really show the glow much. This was also, I thought maybe these lights would, they do show a little bit of blooming but it's not particularly obvious. Now this was the original, I thought the glowing light from the from the plane's window would kind of show up but it also shows up along his forehead here and then with a little black and white edit looks pretty good same thing here it really showed up it's kind of like almost around sunset i think and this light coming through here and um kind of glowing off of all these surfaces you would never know there was a filter on this picture you can hardly see that there's anything any sort of softening going on unless there's a specific point of highlight. Here again, this is the unedited picture. This is with the edit. Kind of glowy highlights in the background, but these just look a little bit blown out. see here plenty of sharpness in his face just maybe a little bit of a glow in the bright spots 
particularly on his glasses. Here all the highlights around him are glowing. You would get something like this without the filter, but I think it would just be a little less prominent. All the buildings here, all the white spots kind of have a slight glow to them. So it's subtle, I'm not, you know. And it's not going to fool anybody into thinking this is film. It's a very, very subtle look. And it's not necessarily that you would want to fool someone into thinking it was a film picture. You're just trying to introduce that glowy quality into the digital pictures without having to extensively edit specific spots and reduce clarity. This is a good one. This is the sun shining right through there and then glowing off of all these little points of highlight. Front lit scenes, you can never notice it. It doesn't really show too much. This was a good one. It's glowing off of the road and through the trees. And I think you would get a little bit of this without the filter as well, as I've said before, but it's just kind of giving it an extra bit of punch. I thought this one just showed it up quite well. The sun's kind of off off to the side here and it's glowing through the trees and fence. That's the unedited version and that's the edit. There was like a large service dog on the plane on the way back which I thought was awesome and they were right in front of us. So, but you can, and you can see here we've got nice glowy light coming from the windows. You don't see it as much here. And then last pictures, this guy walking past here. He was either out of focus or just because he's moving. But this whole wall has a little bit of a glow to it and his head slightly overexposed. That's the that's the original. That's the edit. Same thing again here. Okay, so that is the diffusion filter on the Leica Q. I like how a lot of those pictures look. I like that not necessarily my favorite pictures that I've taken. I only shot with it for a week or so. In some situations, getting that little bit of a glow in pictures, uh, I find it quite pleasing. I'm not necessarily looking to get that look all the time and some of my cameras probably produce their own kind of glow just from imperfections in their lenses and that's fine as well but with the Q I really find it beneficial and maybe some people who are portrait photographers or you know event photographers they shoot at night anything like that uh, it, the diffusion filter could be a good way to introduce that dreamy glowy kind of maybe even cinematic dare I say uh, look to your pictures and ultimately this is not to just try and be like oh it looks like film or make something look like film it's just to get a different look potentially from your images and I know for sure that back in the 80s you see those glowy bridal portraits with the white vignette around it a lot of that was diffusion filters making things look softer and more glowy even though it was still shot on film at least as far as I'm aware it was diffusion filters I wasn't around to, to know the difference. So to make sure I've done my due diligence here, looking at the product specifications, the KNF concept black diffusion filter softens the light coming into the lens, reduces the contrast a little, which is what we saw, and has a softening effect that can be useful for skin, which I think we saw as well. Apparently it's good up to 550 millimeter focal length. Uh, I'm not sure what happens after that. It uses Japanese ACG glass with multi-layer coating so there's reduced reflections and has 87% light transmittance. The multi-layer coating is double-sided, scratch resistant and water and oil proof for those of us who tend to spill oil on our camera gear. As a slim frame to help avoid vignetting and a CNC non-slip design for easy install and removal. I'm not going to lie, I don't really know what most of that means but um, I don't think knowing it would change my buying decision uh, if if it produces a pleasing effect and works well on the on the lens, which for the Q it seems to do very well. 
So if you are interested in one of these filters, Kent Faith gave me an affiliate link, which is down in the description, and you can use that link and the code Liam to get 10% off of your order. And after using this filter, even when I think about the cost of other brands of mist filters, I think I would personally be sticking with the Kent Faith one because I'm not noticing any difference in quality. Uh, I'm not doing a side-by-side -side comparison, but like the product does what it says it will and the images still come out looking nice. So for me, that's a win and I have no problem recommending this filter to anybody looking to get that sort of effect. All right, I'm gonna call it a day at that. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Drop me a comment down below, let me know what you thought and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.